bomb straight bombing in the VIP. Now, bombing in the VIP. Did I bomb in the VIP? I did not bomb in the VIP this weekend. I was in some relatively VIP situations. Mm. I uh, directed Seth Meyers' Netflix special in Minneapolis. Wow. Really? And uh, yeah. And yeah, again, you know how hard it is to direct a Netflix special? <laughs> I know. I was like, kind of does it it's, its nothing. own thing. It's nothing. Um, like I'm directing this technically. You're <laughs> so also direct. Yeah, I'm like directing. Yeah. You are. Everyone is. <laughs> Daniel's going to direct it after we direct it. I didn't know it was going to be a big deal. I was just trying to make something to sound cool. Come on, Dan. Like directing a stand-up special is it's one person standing in a 50 foot radius walking back and forth facing one direction. <laughs> So I'm just getting so I'm getting a close up. I'm getting a, what they call a cowboy, which is a waist up. They call it a cowboy because you can see the gun. Right. It's good for like pew, and yeah. then a head to toe, a wide. Do you do a lot of the side profile to audience? I no. I had s seven cameras, which is a luxury. Like I yeah, directed Owls Madrigals a couple years ago. I think I had five. That was kind of a pain. So I had a dedicated reverse over Seth's shoulder for the crowd, which I'll never use. Why? Because it's not worthwhile. It doesn't help the jokes. I know, but who wants to see cutaways to some goofball laughing? Yeah, like... Me! Why? Oh, as an audience... Yeah. I thought, audience, that it's... It's nice to see uh, someone laughing like I am, or if I didn't think it was that funny... You can still hear it, though. Yeah, but if I didn't, or let's say I didn't, I know it's nice to see the audience reaction sometimes. It's nice to. Yeah, I mean, the old thing Chris used to call his specials, Chris Rock used to call his specials infomercials for his live show, which is why you have audience shots in there. Like, the, you will have fun. Well, okay, yeah, totally. But, I mean, I grew up watching Def Comedy Jam. Like, yeah. I love the audience. Again, they're doing something. They're doing something. Oh. They were special. Black crowds. They were a special crowd. Black crowds were... Dude, the ones that get up and like... Get up, run around and fucking pop lock and... Okay. Yes. Um, okay. So well, I had that, But it anything. was like... So that, that, that... The only VIP thing is like there's just a lot of like agents and all that stuff around. And what I wanted to talk about was I didn't bomb the VIP. My It's hard for me to be around showbiz people because i always feel judged by them mm. and it's hard not to status signal in those situations it's hard not like at, at the flex. cluster fest what you mean it's less a flex and more like here's what i'm doing i mean awful. yeah like i wanted to do a thing at parties out here i just wanted to start bringing a tape measure and go like just measure me man Everyone goes, what are you doing? What are you up to? They don't mean, how are you doing? They don't mean, what's your mood? What's your life? What's your emotions like? They mean, how are you doing relative to me? How is your career relative to mine? Should I feel jealous? and jealous. Or should I be envious. condescending? Which would take your pick, one or the other. Here's a way to fix that. This is what I do. Go. I'll be like, how are you doing? Uh, you know... What have you been up to? What are you doing? Do the motions. And then at the end, I'm like, but are you happy? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, well, I've started saying, how's your mood? How's your mood? Are you happy? Yeah. yeah, just to be like, cool, do it. And then like, are you happy? Because I don't know if I've spoken about this on the show, but my career, when people go, what do you want? What do you want? What are you, what are you working on? Or what do you want? I go, I just want to be in a good mood. That's yeah, all I want because we we use all of this shit as a mood stabilizers as a bridge to a good mood. It's true. If I get this, then I'll be in a good mood. If I did, and it's like I just realized at a certain point I can skip the middleman and just go right to good mood, and you can focus on it. You can make your if you watch the good thing about meditation is it makes you more aware of your thoughts. It doesn't make you. It doesn't give you command over them. It doesn't. It can help you change them a little bit, but more than anything, it, you just see your thought patterns and largely their futility. And so if I can just get, I just want to be in a good mood. So my only goal is if it's work, it's Friday night I directed Seth's special. He's one of my 
fucking closest friends, a amazing guy, been an amazing guy for I've known him 17 years. So oh. a fucking great guy. Se- yeah, 16, 17 years. And then Saturday, I opened for the Lonely Island. Yeah. And guys I've known 15, 14 years, great guys. They've actually like produced something for me. Akiva kind of technically directed three mics. Andy, I've known since before he was on Saturday Night Live. He was dating somebody I knew. Like, he was like, I just know those guys really well. So it was fun. It was just fun to hang out with them. Yeah. But so, and we talked about the good mood thing of like, I just want to be in a good mood. I don't care. Well, how much more could any of us do? Okay, but how? Because <coughs> the problem is, for example, I now, especially the older I get, I realize how rare it is that I wake up happy, good mood, even if something bad's happening. It's just like, yeah, yeah it's fine. Um, you have a good um, disposition. Really good. And, and, and I posted this on Twitter a while ago. Having a good disposition is the equivalent of making a million dollars a year. And people were like, fuck, that easy for you to say. I'm like, it is easy for me to yeah, say. Yeah, because you Cause don't have a good I made a million dollars a year. And if you don't have a good disposition, you might as well make 80. Damn, that is so poignant. I know. And everyone was <laughs> mad at me, of course, because it's Twitter. Yeah. But it's, no, it's that's the th- all it's one of the smartest things. All You've people said. want is to feel good. Yeah. And if you already feel good, why buy in? It's Capitalism sells you, gives you the disease and then sells you the care. So they make you feel shitty. Fucking, what are you fucking? Eh. Yeah. You know what would make you fucking happy? This thing yeah. you don't have. Right. And you're like, hey, fucking guy. The white version thing. of the fucking guy in the, at the, in the hotel. So yeah, you you're my man. No, it is. It's my. It's the Marines. It's like yeah. you fucking maggot piece of shit. <laughs> you ain't shit. You know what make you feel better? This fucking right. iPhone soldier. And you maggots understand that. And you go, okay. Sir, yes, sir. I'll, I'll get that, and then you're like, oh, this doesn't make me happy. Bullshit! I can't hear you. I guess it's because I don't have the newest one. Right. And then the newest one comes out. You're like, that's the one. Oh, that's the one. Everyone shames me into because I have an Android. Yeah. Well, that's Everyone. just, it's my, it's not about status, it's about convenience. Okay. Is but, that I literally cannot send you half the shit I want to send you. Okay. You're impeding a friendship. <laughs> oh, you are. You're fault. impeding a friendship and a podcast. It's not my fault. If you see fault. Bianca on the street, droid shamer. No, people are like, I'll text them like, ew, green. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, you have a phone for a grandma. Anyways, we digress. I think that's very smart because I legitimately enjoy what i have like i'm very focused on where i'm going yes. i'm an actress i'm writing a show i'm doing the podcast like i'm not tripping right like, i'm fine i still work as a waitress right but like i'm my outlook is good But even the putting it in terms of two of the things were work things what you mean i'm writing a show i'm an actress three of them i'm doing yeah. a podcast all of them right but why it's it's immutable but the why do we as people especially america as someone who's lived in europe see things through that prism no and i talk was, about things through that prism. i was just saying that because that's what people talk about and that's what you kind of what you're saying like you used to measure like what are you up to what are you doing like yeah. people ask me that and i get anxiety because what like, is your status yeah, exactly. What's your status? And I don't want to talk about it. I don't talk about it. I only presented those things because that would be one of those four things I'd touch on. Yeah. Whereas it's weird because in the Bay yeah. area, I'm corny. I rap for the Bay. Uh-huh. Um, I have friends that are like, T- everyone's like a different thing yeah. and no one cares, gives a fuck or talks about Because it. it's based on how the people make you feel and not an opportunity. And that's just when you leave LA or, you know, that's not like yeah. the Bay Area only. Like, you know, you go to the Midwest, yeah. no one's like, so, you but know. But there, there are pockets of that. There's pockets, there's pockets of that for sure. There's pockets of that in the Bay. Like I tech. shot the, I shot Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City, in like a nice store. Mm-hmm. And it was, 
it was like, oh, this is the douchey store in Oklahoma City. Oh, this is the one. They had all the labels. They had yeah. uh, and the Band of Outsiders. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 and uh, uh, Rafe Sim. I'm mean, whatever. I could go on and on. How's but your disposition these days? My disposition's better. Way better. Because I've divorced myself from... First of all, I got some status. I got status from three mics that I had not had before. And I don't want to say that... So I don't want to... I can't, I, it would be hypocritical to say, well, I don't need that. Anymore. It, in some ways I checked it and was like, okay, I am talented. So that felt, that feels nice. Right. But I look at the futility of my thinking that I would only feel good if I had done a thing. Mm. And I don't know what the difference is between dreams or aspirations and uh, we just put our worth. Our worth is what we accomplish, right? For sure. And and that we have no intrinsic worth unless we accomplish something. And it's as I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like well, human beings are intrinsically worthwhile. I, I don't know if I agree with that, but I definitely feel like capitalism makes you feel worthless. Right. And then you have to earn your worth through accomplishments and uh, purchases, dumb it's, purchases. <laughs> it's hard to, I think there's nobody that can completely divorce like accomplishments from feeling yeah. good. You know, but the problem is like, for example, I haven't accomplished so much like compared to like people I know in LA, but at the same time, like I am, I feel like I'm always like hugging myself like you know like I like feel like there's people who wow I'm saying so many likes they accomplish something they feel better mm -hmm. you accomplish three mics sort of saddest thing now you felt a little more secure in that in a way not yeah in, like, I feel sad I feel like cool yeah status, like yeah. I belong I feel like that not delusional but I just feel like we're trying to just hug ourselves and make ourselves ourselves feel safe and comfortable, and that happens by different accomplishments, or followers, or likes, or whatever. Know, wherever it, you are in your mind, faulty, completely. Yeah. Whereas I feel like that in a realistic way, but from Off jump, the jump, yeah, because that's not that it, it, that's not that hard. Like love yourself, and you're good enough. Now go do something. You yeah, know? but I was looking. I was. Because you've done something I, for a long time. Yes, but I the, I was looking for I would I was looking for ways to discount myself. Interesting. So half baked. I wrote with Dave. So and then Chappelle show, I wrote with Dave, and so and then like I was like, well, you're yeah, but you're fucking really good at writing sketches, and I would go single camera sketches. Oh, wow. I had written multi -cam I mean, uh, yes, I would just like any excuse. And then I did SNL and wrote a good multicam sketch. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I can write like this fucking dumb. God, you have like an enemy in your head. I know. Like I really do. And there was a quote that uh, I, I, uh, something about the stupidity of I was incredibly foolish in that I believed my own thoughts. Hmm. And it's hard to explain to someone, anyone, who do, just don't believe most of what you think. Yeah. Just don't believe most of what you think. Like most of what you, and that there's a thing called uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, which gives you a list of faulty thinking styles, which I highly recommend. Ooh, I want to know. Can you brief? I'll, I have it on my phone. It's fucking amazing. Well, what are, do you remember the types? Yeah. It's black and white thinking. Okay. Um, Yes, Meaning I can see why that all, would be bad. Yeah, all, all or nothing. All good, all bad. Magnification and minimization, exaggerating or minimizing the importance of events. One might believe their own achievements are unimportant or that their mistakes are excessively important. Oh, wow. That is so interesting. Yes. It's catastrophizing, seeing only the worst possible outcomes of a situation. Yo, so many people do that. Uh, Overgeneralization, making broad interpretations from a single or few events. I felt Psych. awkward during my job interview. I I am always so awkward. Instead of in that situation, I felt a certain way. I am that all the right. time. I suck. 
magical thinking. The belief that acts will influence unrelated situations. I'm a good person. Bad things shouldn't happen to me. Mm. Um, or I did it. That happened because I'm bad. Yeah. I had to get rid of that. Yes. Uh, this personalization. The belief that one is responsible for events outside of their own control. My mom was always upset. She'd be fine if I did more to help her. Jumping to conclusions. Interpreting the meaning of a situation with little or no evidence. Yeah. Sub The sub... Uh, Tweets on that are mind reading, interpreting the thoughts and beliefs of others without adequate evidence. She would not go on a date with me. She probably thinks I'm ugly. Right. Fortune telling, the expectation that a situation will turn out badly without adequate evidence. <laughs> Emotional reasoning, the assumption that emotions reflect the way things really are. I feel like a bad friend, therefore I must be a bad friend. Interesting. Disqualifying the positive, recognizing the negative aspects of a situation while ignoring the positive. Oh my God. One might receive many compliments on an evaluation, but focus on the single piece of negative feedback. Every comic. Should statements. The belief that things should be a certain way. I should always be friendly. And absolutes. Um, yeah, they're all kind of the same thing. It, well, the longer you went on, the more they started being like a few degrees yeah. off from each other. Um, yes fallacy of change you expect that other people will change to suit you if you just pressure or control them enough oh yeah and you I need know to change those. people because your hope for happiness seems to depend entirely on them um yeah like Whew. there's so many and that one i got a lot of flashbacks the re the reason i came to cognitive behavioral therapy was because i was writing two or three years ago i was writing a they wanted me to write a book after three mics and i was like i so i started writing it interesting and i was i basically wanted to write down my thoughts like this is what it's like inside my brain mm -hmm. and i was writing them all down and it was so negative oh no it was so <laughs> negative that i actually thought consciously I cannot show this to Seth. No. Because he'll be so mad at me for thinking this shit. Seth being one person. Like, I could not show it to... to thousands of people reading thousands, yeah, yeah, but no. Seth being like... He'd be like, what? Why the fuck are you... Th like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And, uh, and then that would turn a negative thing. But... So I just Googled negative thought patterns. And then that came back. And, it was, and it's been on my phone... I've given it to other people. It's send it to me. I will to my Android. Yeah, cognitive behavioral thought pattern, cognitive behavioral CBT thought patterns. Interesting. And it's there's tons of sheets with it. So, um, so that was I didn't bomb the VIP. I did status a little bit where I was like, I was doing a thing, and then I, uh, uh, I'm in a lot of commercials. I'm not, uh, uh, I got another. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's just desperation. It's just right. like bad self defense that. It's doing linguistic self-defense when I'm not being attacked. Like, I'm like, ah, ah, and I feel like people are doing karate on me and no one's doing karate. No, no one wants it. No one wants to do karate. No one's, I'm, it's all in my head. This is how do you feel? Tell us how do you feel, Neil? This is how do you feel? Tell us just how you feel, Neil. Feel. You know the deal, gotta learn just how Neil Brennan feels, it keeps it real, with this combo's being